everybody, it's Tatter here at Week Zero, checking in team number 166, Chop Shop. Last year, this team, uh, Alliance Captains at Championships, had an absolutely phenomenal season, and got a great looking robot uh, here as well, too, to showcase for you. Of course, we're going to be taking a look uh, at their uh, intake that they have here, their, uh, their claw. Uh, they have a really awesome arm. We're going to talk about some of the programming that's gone into it, and some of the inspiration between, uh, behind their sword modules as well, too. Help me speak more about this team, by the way, of Angel, Nathan, Joe and Sammy's going to be operating in the background. At 166, really that team on the rise. Such a great season last year. Looking for big things this year. Let's hear more about them on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. So Angel, let's start out on your robot. I know when we were talking earlier that uh, you talked about some inspiration you've taken for your swerve uh, drive and then some of the uh, kind of unique modifications you've done on the overall superstructure. Talk to me about that and then we'll start to follow uh, the journey for the scoring mechanisms too. All right, so this year we're using Mark IV swerve modules and we took some inspiration from team 4414 high tide where we went with two by two box tube but actually did inner cutouts on the inside of the box tube for, to allow for the swerve modules to actually be bumped out as close to the edge as possible while still keeping a hole pattern going around the entire robot. Now that allowed for easier mounting for our bumper mounts and because of that, it's extremely easy to swap our bumpers very quickly so we don't have to feel as pressed for time when we have to swap between matches and bumper colors. You know, we actually don't talk about bumpers too much, but I want to get a little close up on this here. This is really awesome. Talk to me about how you came up with uh, doing these types of bumper mounts. So we had a little bit of an issue because our superstructure was actually slightly mounted on the outside. And originally we hadn't uh, accounted for that when we were going into design, but some of our students were thinking of a quick way that we could still utilize all of our robot and actually mount the bumpers. So we cut out holes in some brackets to allow for spacing for the nuts and the actual uh, bolt itself. And then they strategically mounted a, I guess, a, a stopper of sorts to just push down and it's clamped and you're good. I love it. It's really, really cool to see and I hope teams can take some good inspiration from this as well. Uh, talking about your uh, arm here, you got a uh, pretty, as we'd say in uh, our industry, beefy arm that you go through on this. Very much so. Uh, so talking about how you came up with the general structure uh, for this, uh, of course the telescoping as well, anything else that's gone into it. Yep, so the telescoping arm, we actually borrowed inspiration from our 2022 robot Valkyrie. Now the uh, climber specifically, the climber last year had almost the exact same design, but we upscaled it for this year because of the game pieces. Um, we went from a 2x2 two two and a 1x1 one one box tube to now a 3x3 three three and a 2x2 two two box tube. Yeah, let's see that arm come up a little bit. I'd love to see just how that comes out and talk to me about some of the telescoping features of it as well. You gotta bring the arm in, Sammy. So on the stage uh, for this here, when you're looking at doing, uh, having just a single stage uh, or a double stage on here, uh, what made you determine like, hey, this is the length we want to go with versus maybe doing more stages or anything like that as well? So we found that more degrees of freedom and basically having multiple stages was going to be more complicated for us, whereas we were already comfortable because of last year's design with just doing a double stage. It just took us a bit more time finding the right numbers and doing the calculations to allow for us to actually uh, have the right size stages and reach that maximum point. And your team, you're looking at scoring all three levels, yes, right? Yes, we so can score all three. Obviously having the good height here. How, how is uh, center of gravity coming into play for your team? Because, you know, you, you do have a tall row. It does look like most of your weight is down below. Absolutely. So our center of gravity is approximately a foot off the ground right now, but we're only weighing in at 90 pounds. So we have oh, wow. plenty of weight to play with and add more to the bottom to lower that as much as possible. Uh, Nathan, talk to me about the uh, claw mechanism uh, that we have here. So uh, you got that, looks like an articulating uh, or actuating claw that you have, uh, and then some compliant wheels I see in here. Uh, so talking about uh, this uh, overall uh, intake that you have for your claw and why it was best for your team. All right, so we decide on 
a wheeled intake. Originally, it was only going to be a linear intake, but with pistons and pneumatics, but we decided quickly on wheeled for the touch or grab it method. Uh, right now, it's being driven by a brush motor with a five to one reduction, and we chose compliant or Andy Mark green compliant wheels just so they have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, so when you're looking uh, at your intake here, it does look like it does open decently wide, uh, but when you're looking at analyzing the game, how did you determine this was the appropriate width for your intake to be? Because some teams have it smaller, some teams have it much larger. So right now, this is the appropriate width to grab both cubes and cones. Right now, a cube can fit perfectly snug with the wheels, then pulling it in, and then when, and then when we close it, it can wrap right, right around the cone it's so that we can handle both. Is your team looking at picking up from the ground or are you primarily picking up from the stations? Um, right now we're picking up from the stations and, and we can pick up cubes from the ground. We're looking at, in the future, picking up cones from the ground as well, long as, and also adding a rest to it. Well, looking forward to seeing those uh, iterations as you go through. Of course, we're only here at week zero, right? So we're only, you know, five, six weeks in. Lots more to go uh, until your next competition as well. Joe, talk to me about from a programming standpoint uh, on your robot, uh, what's gone into it? I know you have a lot of future plans with vision and some other aspects yes. as well. So talk to me about that and anything else that's currently on your robot too. Okay. So for now, before week zero, we've mostly just been focusing on getting integration done for all the parts. And we've been using... Um, Mechanical Advantage's new logging framework, which has saved us a ton of headaches. Um, Advantage Kit, along with Advantage Scope, for looking at uh, a bunch of data. And um, for now, before week zero, we've mainly been focusing on safety. So we've added a bunch of software safety fe features, sure. like limits. Um, for example, this thing won't go in all the way until this thing's closed. Um, we've added a bunch of protection, so uh, this intake doesn't slam into the end once it's extended. So that's it, what we've been focusing on. Is that all software-based, or do you have hardware stops as well, uh, too? It's mostly software-based. Oh, okay. Because we've had issues in previous years where if we use just hardware-based stuff, uh, we break things. We break chains. <laughs> so, yeah, we learned that the hard way. We've been trying to avoid that as much as possible this year. And now moving on, we're mainly just going to be focused on automating everything. So the new April tag system, which has been announced, um, should help us tremendously with that. Uh, we won't have any uh, um, issues with aligning since that'll be done automatically, uh, which will help us in autonomous. Um, we're hoping on automating the positioning of the arm and the intake, which should help with scoring. Uh, and that's basically it. We're mostly just focused on automating everything for this year. Well, I look forward to seeing that progress and updates uh, from your robot as well, too. Yeah. But here at Week Zero, looking great so far. I know especially your second match uh, actually has to record us. You have the world high score right now, so that's fantastic. Uh, for, well, it might get broken a little bit later, but so far you do hold that title. So looking forward to see what 166 brings to the table. Wish you best of luck here and, of course, at your district events uh, coming up here in New England. Thanks a lot, guys. Right, thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.